Thank you, Julian. Uh, and it's great to be back to present to the forum today since my last talk uh, just back in February. And since February, there have been many exciting developments and progress made both in the industry and by First Hydrogen. So I'm very pleased to talk to you about that today. Just uh, before we get going, I draw your attention to the forward-looking nature of the presentation. So please review our forward-looking statements at your leisure. Now, for those uh, new here today, and as a reminder, we are First Hydrogen, and simply put, we have a mission to accelerate decarbonization in the mobility sector, focusing on commercial vehicles, doing this holistically by applying advanced technology in order to provide a straightforward and compelling value proposition uh, to customers, provide a total cost to ownership with zero emission that is compelling for a part of the zero uh, emission uh, world we're entering into at the moment. Uh, we do this by combining an automotive solution with the vehicle, a zero emission vehicle, with an energy solution, which is green hydrogen, to combine the two to provide a total solution for the market. Our holistic solution is based on three key components. As I mentioned, the vehicle, which we consider to be part of the green mobility trend, combined with the green hydrogen, which is hydrogen produced through electrolysis using renewable energy, with what we refer to as a green powertrain. The powertrain is the heart of the vehicle. It consists of a fuel cell system, energy storage in terms of tanks, batteries, controls, and the uh, EMU or electromotive uh, system to drive the overall vehicle. Combine all three together and we can deliver lowest total cost of ownership for zero emission for our applications. So very exciting indeed. Now, later in the presentation, I will provide updates on First Hydrogen's progress. But first I wanted to share the very latest news on our market which is uh, indeed significant changes since my last update. Now, I've spoken previously about the convergence-driven megatrend for hydrogen. And for context, I want to further reinforce this very important trend today. The hydrogen megatrend is here and now, and it's critical for the investor community to be on board for this mega opportunity. This trend is the convergence of multiple factors that are all important in their own right, and when combined in a convergence of both needs and capabilities, we truly have a rock solid opportunity that we can seize with confidence. And this is why we are so passionate about what we are doing, as we know the conditions are right to create tremendous value going forward. We are seeing large scale plans for green hydrogen production worldwide as well as the distribution of hydrogen. Hydrogen is now clearly recognized as integral for large scale energy storage from renewable energy, and also an important element to support decarbonization of the mobility market, where the total cost to ownership case is additive to what is possible with alternatives such as batteries. Global hydrogen electrolyzer projects have recently been announced to now exceed one terawatt and are up 18% in the last six months. So double digit growth in only six months. A terawatt pipeline of projects is equivalent to 1 million megawatts or 10,100 megawatt individual projects. And for context, a 100 megawatt project is a very large electrolyzer project by today's standards. So very significant pipeline. I was also at, uh, recently at the Canadian Hydrogen Convention in Edmonton, Alberta. And I was very excited to see the pace of development in Alberta concerning not only green hydrogen, but blue hydrogen. And for reference, blue hydrogen would be hydrogen produced from legacy natural gas assets where the CO2 produced through the production process is sequestered in some fashion. And Alberta is well positioned for sequestration and will lead in that area. And Air Products has already broken ground on their Canadian net zero 
hydrogen energy complex, which is a $1.6 billion capital investment. Further, you may have seen the news only in the last few days from Next Era, a major US utility, which is considering an investment of some $20 billion in hydrogen projects as a, res a result of the recent US IRA incentives. So this de these developments have really invigorated the hydrogen industry with scale up occurring in both production and application sectors, such as our mobility plans. Our technology and value proposition is interwoven into the fabric of this mega trend. And I will now show you exciting developments since I spoke just in February. There are three key updates I will go through and we'll jump into consisting of the US IRA uh, report, new European Union commitments, and exciting news from Canada. Now, the US industry has really jumped on the IRA, which is the Inflation Reduction Act, which contains the incentive packages for zero energy transition to zero emissions. And uh, the Department of Energy focus is clear on creating what we call hydrogen hubs, as shown here uh, on the map of the United States. Proposals for hydrogen hubs span coast to coast and represent some 40 states, so a very comprehensive level of interest across the country. Proposals were submitted in April, and the DOE expects to award six to 10 projects with uh, updates and initial uh, you know, indications of interest on those six to 10 projects this year. Awards will receive support, financial support in terms of loan guarantees, as well as other incentives as part of the IRA. These projects are very significant and will lay the bedrock foundation for a new sustainable energy industry in, in the United States. The projects are expected to be in production by the end of this decade and are additive to existing initiatives to scale up infrastructure for hydrogen in the US. Now, in my last talk, I focused on California as a pace setter in vehicle decarbonization. And as a note, California also has recently announced plans to accelerate decarbonization of heavy trucks, in addition to passenger vehicles and light commercial vehicles. So big progress made in California. The even bigger news is the announcement by the federal EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency to introduce nationwide plans for firm requirements to decarbonize the vehicles in the United States. Our segment, the commercial vehicle, light commercial vehicle segment, is planned to require two thirds of all light commercial vehicles to be zero emission by 2032 and 100% by 2035. And that is for the complete US market. So very significant. When you take the cumulative effect of the products being announced and the legislation being put in place, we have traction. We have traction on large projects. We have traction on emission reduction plans as mentioned and on policy. And this provides major underpinnings for First Hydrogen's business plans going forward. Now, the European Union is also keeping pace and is rolling out the execution elements of its own ambitious plans for the energy transition. Following the February 1st announcement to effectively match the US IRA program, the European Union has rolled out a number of significant programs, starting with the formation of the Hydrogen Bank. The Hydrogen Bank will provide market certainty on the demand side of hydrogen production. This market-making function is very practical and it draws on the positive learnings from the wind and the solar industry that have already been implemented in Europe. A contract for difference model is expected where the bank will effectively bridge fund hydrogen in order to ensure that it's economically priced to the market. And this is going to ensure adoption is affordable 
during the early scale-up stages of the industry. This is happening this year. So things, again, are moving very fast and in very significant steps. Combine this with binding targets for hydrogen production and combine not only the targets, but faster and easier permitting, uh, definitions on standards, and targeted areas, dedicated areas for clusters of industry to develop within each member state within the European Union. And you can say, what does this all look like? How big will it be? Well, here's one indication. This is a recent report summarized here where it shows the planned installations of green electrolyzers, of hydrogen produced from uh, electrolyzers, expanding from 138 gigawatts currently installed up to, sorry, 100, so 143 megawatts today, up to 138 gigawatts by the end of this decade. And that is almost 1,000 fold increase, a massive increase. And it covers, as you can see by the map, continental Europe, as well as the UK. Now, hydrogen holds tremendous value to decarbonize the mobility sector, as we know. So it makes sense to complement the above two initiatives with a solid infrastructure plan. And this is exactly what's happening. Look at this plan also announced since February to create a fueling station backbone in Europe and the UK. Stations in major cities, stations every 200 kilometers along major highways. This grid will be complemented also by an EV charging grid. So the overall network between hydrogen and electric vehicle charging is very comprehensive and will cover the complete European nations. So absolutely brilliant. And it's uh, in summary, we can see a real solution unfolding in Europe for both hydrogen adoption, hydrogen generation, and EV application. Now, a quick update in Canada. Canada really steps up with our most recent budget. This is in part to uh, a response to the US IRA, where we need to remain competitive, and in part to our commitment to, to decarbonize. To highlight, the budget will provide refundable tax credits for investments, loan programs for projects, low tax rates for businesses, adoption support for businesses, as well as for R&D. And in combination with this is a clear and strong regulatory framework providing the confidence that this trend is a priority and that this is going to be actionable going forward. So now we have the financial support in place in Canada, and this will improve the investment attractiveness and end user affordability for zero emission solutions. Canada now is a super attractive place for our business, given the financial incentives and coupled with existing renewable energy resources. And while we must be competitive with our Southern neighbor, we must also build on our longstanding integrated economies in a friendly and collaborative manner. And this reality was really reinforced by President Biden's visit in April to Ottawa, where plans and commitments were made for an integrated North American approach to ensure both clean energy and good jobs, with the key out to, uh, deliverable being the formation of an energy task force to ensure that any conflicts, any issues are resolved in a fair and quick manner. So, key takeaways. The market summary is truly exciting with significant industry progress since February. So the pace of change is amazing. There's huge growth potential and our focus on Europe, the UK and North America remains true. And now significantly increased opportunities in Canada. Of course, our concern is climate, climate change. And 
the news front on climate change has not improved since I last spoke. And in fact, I think commitments to climate change will only drive an increased pace of change for our industry, which again, we're ready and prepared to step up for. So the plans are set, actions are happening, we're right in the center of all this. So let's see exactly where First Hydrogen is. Job one is to prove we have something truly exciting and valuable with our first vehicle development. And this is exactly what we've done by not only developing our first van, but also lining up customer trials that we can validate our application value proposition. Now, we previously announced our demonstration program, and we now have more than 15 customers signed up for this program. In fact, we're oversubscribed. So it's been a tremendous success. And with this program, we've now, as of last week, started with our first customer, Revis. Revis is now operating our van. And uh, just a little bit of background on Revis. They're a very large UK fleet operator with some 120,000 light commercial and heavy goods vehicles uh, that they lease and operate every year. So an excellent first customer for our vehicles. Now, we've also put in place a comprehensive vehicle data collection system that we will release details on in the coming days. This system provides in-route data analytics. We've already tracked our vehicle operation in the Birmingham area. I draw your attention to the map, and you can see uh, highlighted the the, the red zone uh, to the north of Birmingham, this is a highway. And I've highlighted the speed on the highway of approximately 91 kilometers per hour. So it's going at highway speed in that region. Then as the vehicle goes on its regularly scheduled route, uh, it, it goes through different elevations and different speeds. Overall, the analysis we've conducted on this real world uh, application is very exciting in that we have outperformed our expectations on vehicle range. And in fact, this vehicle in this condition has exceeded 600 kilometers on one tank of hydrogen. And uh, our prior assumptions would be that the range is 500 kilometers. So a significant uh, outperformance metric we've achieved. This excellent progress for the initial demonstration will only be further optimized uh, as we collect more data from the trials. Now, we also announced details on our next-gen vehicle platform through a series of reveal images, including this very cool camper van image. The leisure vehicle market or camper van market is also very significant in its own right and would be additive to our core focus on the commercial fleet market. Our next-gen platform plans to offer both fuel cell and electric powertrain configurations to further optimize overall market reach for our products. Our next-gen design provides for optimized functionality and utility for the light commercial van market while not forgetting the importance of attractive aesthetics. So let's put this all together in terms of timing, in terms of our business plan. And this is what we've done here. Now, importantly, I mentioned we're oversubscribed on our initial fleet trials. We also have tremendous support and interest from customers. And these customers are saying one simple thing. We like what you're doing, make it happen sooner. And that's exactly what we plan to do. Our initial fleet trials will be immediately followed by the production of our current Gen 1 vehicle. And this vehicle will be updated for the latest standards, safety standards coming into effect in the markets with the intended product release in the 2025-2026 timeframe. This product, the Gen 1 product, will bridge us until we have our next gen product fully designed and commercialized. And by doing this new program, it will allow us to address more immediate customer needs, build our order book, progressively scale our manufacturing, 
to grow our business. Now, as shown here, uh, we also have our energy plans. So I now like to turn our attention to our green hydrogen plans. Now, a quick summary, our green hydrogen plans are to support the vehicles to ensure that fuel is available to allow our customers to convert to zero emission. We will source or self-generate the hydrogen based on regional economics and market maturity. For example, with the exciting news in Europe, I believe there will be a very comprehensive public network available that these vehicles can be easily fueled at. So we'll look at sourcing in the European market. Uh, project development, where we do do it, will be focused on renewable rich regions where the cost structures are attractive. The initial development that we're underway is in the 50 megawatt range. So 50 megawatts for a point of reference will support a cumulative fleet of approximately 2000 vans in the market. Our near term plans are to develop three to five sites and we'll synchronize the timing of these sites with our fleet offtake arrangements. Now, as previously announced, we are very active in Quebec and we've selected Quebec because Quebec has a strong policy framework. It already has a plan for a green economy. It already has a plan for green hydrogen. It already has strong and clear support from the province with potential financing from Investment Quebec uh, and as well as Case de Popo and others. And now it has the federal subsidy and tax program support in place that will also help offset CapEx and customer adoption costs. So the cumulative effect is really fantastic. And that, you know, overall, we expect the economics to be extremely attractive and Quebec to be a first mover in this market. Now, uh, we've also previously announced our plans for Shawinigan as our first ecosystem project. So this is where we're combining the production of the fuel, the green hydrogen, with the production of the vehicles. In addition, our production plans for the vehicles will be to serve the Quebec market, as well as for export throughout North America. Now, uh, again, Shawinigan is uh, in an ideal place located between Montreal and Quebec City, serving some 4 million people. And it's also part of a cluster known as the Valley de la Transition Energétique. And so uh, it's, it's well positioned, not only for our vans, but for other uses of hydrogen, such as heavy duty trucks. And now in Quebec City, north of Quebec City, there's a trial of the first passenger fuel cell train. And there's interest on the St. Lawrence Seaway for using hydrogen in marine. Now, last week, we announced securing both the sites needed to undertake this project. So let's look at the details there. Our electrolyzer facility is, is shown here on this plot of land in the uh, dotted uh, white line. It's being picked because of its proximity to a major Hydro-Quebec substation. So the interconnect will be easily obtainable. And it's also adjacent to the major river where we intend to draw the water necessary for the electrolyzer. It's well positioned with uh, infrastructure for highways and for railways. And we have ample land for future expansion. So very ideal. Further, the zero emission facility is nearby and is in the techno park, which is intended to be a manufacturing cluster. Again, lots of room for expansion and well connected to highways and railways. In summary, we're so happy to be in Quebec. Uh, we're so happy to be in Shawinigan and we'll have further updates on our progress in the future. Now, just to wrap up, I'd like to give you this quick summary here. Uh, what we're doing is a holistic plan in nature to simplify new technology adoption for zero emission. We're doing this through advanced technology with fuel cell technology initially, and combining that with the hydrogen as a, as a service with green hydrogen availability. So we'll be able to de-risk the adoption risk of the customer. We'll also de-risk infrastructure timing by controlling the initial launch of uh, projects. 
and provide certainty of feeling to our customers. The industry update I gave you shows that this is a sustainable long-term trend that has huge growth potential. We've made major progress on our vehicle front with our in-service trials now underway and with our advanced plans now for Shawinigan. And, and last point, this market's huge. It's billions of dollars just within the European, UK and North American markets with our TOLA solution approach well positioned to provide attractive returns. So with that, I hand it back to Julian and thanks again for listening. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Rob. That's a really, really good uh, overview and uh, in, in details of what's happening with chat. Um, so if anyone has questions, please use the Q&A box or the chat box as usual. Uh, in the meantime, I will start with the first question. Um, we have seen a lot of new cars manufacturer coming in the market. So cars, light truck, um, with very difficult succeed uh, success in the sense of for example lion electric in quebec or other type like that and we see a new model being uh, started by a company for example like fisca who actually outsource all of their manufacturing so on to make sure that they don't have to raise billion dollars and build their car by themselves um which model are you adopting and why so that, that's a great point i mean a lot of the companies have struggled with manufacturing so I think you know our our business model. Uh, we we decided very early to partner with uh, key competence partners that could bring the necessary skills and capabilities to execute our business plan. So initially, I think uh, we'll go step by step and we'll work with partners uh, outsourcing uh, as as a principal method. But ultimately, you, you know these have these have to advance as we scale up, where we take more ownership and more control. But I think what we're going to do is, is demonstrate uh, our capability and our business plan step by step by achieving key milestones. Uh, my vision for the long term is that we'll be doing this manufacturing in Quebec for North American market as an example, uh, with partners uh, side by side, but we have to, sh we have to uh, advance it in a, a significant way for the long term. The, the market potential is just too big and the cost opportunities to further improve costs are there through the dedicated program. So we'll advance step by step, uh, as I showed in my plan going from Gen 1, ultimately the Gen 2. By the time we get to the Gen 2, we'll have fully validated the market, we'll have fully validated our capabilities, and we'll have fully coordinated with the supply chain and manufacturing partners. Okay, good expectation, uh, explanation. And then a lot of people are asking themselves how uh, this refueling will be happening. Is it going to be the equivalent of going to a gas station? Is it going to be at industry uh, location within parkings of big fleets or so on? Can you tell us a little more details of how exactly those fleets will be interacting with refueling stations? Yes. So we picked fleets because it, it's uh, they have critical mass and we can coordinate the fueling station location with the fleet customers. So there'll be a, a central uh, hub for fueling for the fleet customers. Uh, that's, that's for the initial transition. I mean, we could, as an example, have a refueling station at the warehouse where the fleet comes back uh, at the end of the day, gets refueled, and then off they go. The beauty is with a you know with a 500, 600, even more than 600 kilometer range, it gives a lot of flexibility to the fl fleet customers. They don't have to worry so much. They have to charge every day, uh, as an example. So, but I, I think the initial concept is uh, depot fueling. But uh, however, as I showed in Europe, it's going to be comprehensive. There will be a public network. Uh, so then that will only enhance the flexibility to allow fueling to occur wherever and whenever it's necessary. Great. And one last question. It's at 3.30, so we have about 30 seconds. Someone is asking what cells are planned in two years, if you can take just 15 seconds on that. So in, in two years, it uh, takes us to 2025. Uh, we'll just be launching these, the series production Gen 1 vehicle. So uh, I would still say the sales numbers would be quite modest, but I think what we will have is a substantial order book based on the customer development we now have underway. 
Perfect. That's all the time we had. Rob, thank you very much for the overview, legislation, market, your product, development stages, and so on. Uh, for everyone that wants to follow the story, please, you have the information on uh, the uh, screen right now. Rob Campbell, CEO of Energy, thank you very much for participating again in the IIF. Thank you again, Julian. Pleasure to be here.